Hello YouTube viewers welcome to my show Rocket Monday in today's episode we're going to take a look at Kessler syndrome so let's dive right into it so what it is is basically space junk now were we littering in the space yes and no now simply think of it this way if when we send rockets specifically three stage or more stage rockets the upper stage generally does not fall back to earth so we end up with giant rocket stage uh, that is orbiting so in this sort of scenario they act as a junk basically because there is no purpose in this uh, it's not serving any function is just there so that orbit where it's orbiting it's flat out useless for any other satellite so and when you have something like this big uh, it also has the consequence that because uh, solar radiation is much more intense at those altitudes as in like you know few thousand kilometers the paint from these puppies uh, peel off now you might be like okay pa paint is not, should not cause any issue it does cause an issue simply because if even a small gram to milligram of a paint fleck travels at like you know 24000 to 20 uh, 29000 km per hour is going to cause severe damage to your spacecraft now the fact that it is small and the fact that it is super high speed should uh, only means one thing destruction because this uh, you know the, even though mass is so small the kinetic energy per gram is so damn high that if you get hit by something let's say uh, 10 uh, gram or even like a, something as small as a nut bolt yeah it's going to destroy your satellite so for this reason this started to become an issue like first we had a large rocket and not to mention when we have solid rocket boosters srbs basically the exhaust also has particles in them basically aluminum particles so they also become an issue so it's very small and it's a very high speed and uh, we generally have radar stations on ground to track it however there is a category that we can't track uh, accurately track because it's too small so those too small is generally below 10 cm so if anything is below 10 cm at best case scenario if the density is too damn high we will like we detect there is this cloud sort of situation happening but we will not able to predict how many things are there in that orbit so when you talk about things of that nature something smaller than 10 uh, cm which can still cause significant damage to satellite and space stations there are millions of them that's where the problem comes in it's not like there are just few big ones if you if we had things like that it's not an issue but uh, when because we have millions of them it's a issue so what is this kessler syndrome then that is space junk so what is the kessler syndrome it's uh, after a professor the name is after a professor basically he came up with the idea that we could have a scenario where we'll have a crash inevitably sooner or later things crash into one another which has happened in 2009 when cosmos a defunct satellite from russia uh, 2022 51 uh, crashed into iridium satellite constellation uh, 33 so what could happen worst case scenario the kessler syndrome the runaway is basically you will have one crash so this happened in 2009 that created that many debris now we were lucky this were in generally lower orbits but if it hap it would have happened in higher orbit it would have created this basically you will have one crash which will lead to many more crash that will lead to even more crash and the whole space will be just littered by debris this was the premise of the movie uh, gravity so it's not a uh, you know far out idea it's not doomsday scenario it's a mathematical scenario it's like if you have one crack in your dam uh, nothing happens if you have 15 16 yeah your dam needs maintenance quickly otherwise it will crack so uh, break down things of that nature happens in space also it's like you know you have one object uh, causing a collision okay no problem but if it creates debris that is causing collision with 100 more yeah then the chain reaction is like a nuclear reaction you know 1 to 10 to uh, 100 to million so in that sort of scenario we'll have a scenario we'll have space debris that will cause more debris and then we'll end up with a scenario where we'll have no space now be mindful when i am saying no space it's not that this whole area will be littered that we can't see through it it will be invisible to us but because there will be so many small particles traveling so fast any rocket trying to go through it will get destroyed by it that's the fear aspect of it it's not that we can't build something that can withstand it it's just that instead of sending satellites that are let's say 1 or 2 tons we have to send satellite with an armor of 60 or 80 tons so suffice to say practically we cannot do that that's the fear the fear aspect is that once this chain reaction has begun there would be no ability to like you know launch anything we can't go through it because even though we can track big process once enough of them have broken down into small pieces it simply would be untrackable it's like you can track one uh, giant whale but you can't track like you know hundreds of uh, small microbes that scenario would occur so even though space there would be a lot of space in space it just would be too dangerous to do anything that's the kessel syndrome basically we'll be trapped on earth 
so you might be like okay i don't care you know um, like it's space i don't care you know it's how it's going to affect me well let's start with the simplest and the uh, the first one sign of it there will be no satellite navigation for terrestrial and aviation use now you might be like i don't use gps again you may not but every delivery service does rely on it uh, ambulances rely on it like taxi services uber ola all of them uh, relies on that so it is a big part of terrestrial world that we are relying on uh, you know satellite navigation and when i say satellite navigation i am not meaning only you know gps there is gps there is glonass there is navic uh, there is g3 structure there are hundreds of things all of them uh, give us a very good uh, accurate uh, you know accuracy on navigation and not to mention even though you can like let go of uh, terrestrial use what you going to do with uh, aviation now before the advent of gps planes used to rely on what we call internal navigation system and they were very very prone to error sometimes plane could drift upwards of 100 km like it's going in a straight line but like you know navigation does kind of drift over time gps because it can keep checking internal navigation cannot check from anything else it's not getting any data so while is going over sea you could have a scenario that you can be off by like 100 or 200 km things of that nature has happened where uh, military fired on a civilian airline not knowing that that civilian airline is here uh, you know in the restricted territory not because like you know they wanted to crash or cause any accident they simply their navigation drifted so for uh, our current avionics basically we need gps the, we can't use this many plane in uh, our airports if we don't have gps glonass and hundreds of other system like that so even though we can like you know litter the whole land with uh, radar stations to balance it what you going to do on sea so we need like like your airport done if gps goes down if glonass goes down if all navigation goes down yeah your airport they have to reduce the you know number of planes that is going back and forth that you may say like i'm poor i don't care but you will be affected by the fact that there will be no direct to home tv now that itself may not be an issue but because television is a big communication industry like data from point a to point b gets across using it that's a big blow to any civilization and any society and news network will collapse basically all of them not one or two all of them Uh, and then welcome to the long term consequence of that there will be no weather forecast now you're like okay weather forecasts are not reliable they are uh, i when i used to be young basically you know in 10 years old uh, i remember seeing uh, basically satellite predictions of uh, where the hurricanes will go those were very inaccurate at that time that time they were like giving accuracies in such a way that it was like okay this whole coast area is in danger like hurricane is coming from this side this whole coast area is in danger nowadays we are so good with our predicting ability that like now we tell that this state this district it's going to hit land and we are accurate to it like uh, many uh, if you see the accuracy how accurately we are tracking our uh, weather phenomena especially large weather phenomena it's uh, creepy how accurate we are in predicting those things they may look uh, you know unpredictable but we are like yeah it's going to go here go here go here go here and touch land here yeah it does touch land there so uh, imagine uh, going back to a world where uh, you have no early warning system you have no scenario where you can actually know what kind of hurricanes or tsunami is happening so the weather uh, is also out now again you may still say i don't live in around coast it's not going to affect me but the final key will affect 100% of individual on this planet is the fact that it will cr- crash stock market basically money will lose its value now i'm not going to go in detail like how many steps it will have to happen if that happens but suffice to say is very dangerous and if money goes everything goes so for this reason kessel syndrome is truly a danger to you and i it's not something like okay only affect kind of rich people or self driving car no it's going to affect 100% of us so it is a big and absolute danger so what's being done about it now uh, recently uh, once Uh, people started to understand this that kessel syndrome is a inevitability not like you know oh, it may happen like as more and more and more and more rockets started to be launched people realized that it's not a point of whether it could happen or not it's like when it will happen so new laws were passed uh, in around 2000 and 2002 that any new satellite built after that period must have a way to dispose of it basically if it's a geostationary satellite there should be a way to send it to uh, graveyard orbit if it's a low earth satellite it should be able to dispose orbit itself properly so that's a now mandatory law now be mindful it's not applied on every country and it's not a uh you know mandatory as in like no uh, like somebody is holding a gun to you that you should do it it's not like taxes so there have been some uh, you know laws that has been passed and european union france uh, and uh, usa i think is taking this law seriously now 
effort from all manufacturers be it ULA be it from SpaceX be it ISRO from all uh, uh, you know areas the effort is to reduce now that's the whole point like we don't want to send uh, anything in space that will cause more catastrophic so response has been there like it's not like uh, the people in charge is like sleeping they know what is going on and they are taking steps now to help with our current situation we have what we call uh, tracking and monitoring stations things of this nature basically uh, littered around the grove where it's tracking and uh, communicating with uh, on a multiple ground station to give a very accurate prediction when the collision is going to happen how to avoid it uh, what kind of things we can do now be mindful even though we are tracking it sometimes we end up in a scenario that two satellites that are active may be run, uh, low on fuel or maybe out of fuel in that scenario we will simply uh, wait and watch how that clash happens so it's not that even if you can predict it you may not be in a scenario where you can do anything about it it's like you know let's say you are seeing that uh, there are three four satellites that are gonna make a close call with a giant second stage uh, let's say you moved one satellite it had fuel you moved it what about the second one what about the third one so things of this nature so this is a very uh, stop gap major it's like we started this uh, very early on and we are taking a very closer look with it so a lot of money is being spent into tracking and monitoring so at least uh, international space station remains safe then all these countries be it european union be it america be it darpa they are taking this enough seriously that a uh, lot of r d money has started like at this point uh, darpa is asking for the world like hey do you have a solution to this so there are uh, some solutions that are being you know brought to the table now you may be like okay is this if it is this serious like this kind of response is very uh, you know weak response it's like ah let's take care of it it's like now you have to understand the problem with this is the politics and money now money i will explain it is very simply in this way is that you have to go to someone and say give me billion of do- billions of dollars so we i can clean junk yeah that's really not a you know very strong pitch meeting nobody cares like you know unless that kessel syndrome happens nobody's gonna care about it it's like global warming nobody ca- gonna care about it unless it happens unless like you know we really start to see sea level rising such a uh, at a such a rapid rate that you know small islands to go away and coastline starts to go only then people will be like okay 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 we have to take this thing seriously so that happening with the money is like you can't go to isro or you can't go to america uh, nasa or uh, isa where like okay spend 1 billion dollar to you know clean up space jam nobody is going to give you money for that try selling it to audience try selling it to your uh, you know public and then it comes to the fact that there are some gr- uh, lot of ground based solution that like uh, space gun uh, laser broom and uh, high explosives in high or- orbit not not orbit as in low altitudes is that the problem with that these things even though they can clear a lot of space jam they can also clear working satellites now that creates a political nightmare it's like think of it this way let's say uh, china builds a giant space laser and it's like clearing its debris now either by accident or by just some uh, happenstance happens that india also loses one satellite uh, that is you know in that area that affected area now what will india think india will think that uh, china used a laser weapon to disable our satellite so you can understand that like nobody wants this uh, laser uh, you know lasers who are you know uh, targeting their satellite but we have to do it sooner or later we have to do it so there is a lot of politics involved in this nobody even though um, isro have good intention even though nasa has good intention even though ESO, esa has good intention nobody can uh, you know honestly do anything about it simply because it's a any weapon that will allow you to clean those things can also you know allow you to knock down active satellites for this reason it's very intermingled however even though with uh, all those doom and gloom scenario i want to state one thing very obvious obviously for in front of you that it can be done we can take care of it it's like if tomorrow this happens if like okay let's say one meteorite hit one uh, you know ge- big geostationary satellite and uh, this kessler syndrome happened we can take care of it it's like if this happened like if truly that happened we can take care of it we will be back you know back to uh, our working order in less than 50 years we have the technology to take care of it like first technology is giant guns now this is hard project there has been a babylon gun which is much bigger than this so this sort of gun can simply knock out things in from orbit now you're already like wouldn't this itself introduce more uh, no simply because it's not meant to fire things on orbit guns do not allow you to do that gun simply fires something in what we call ballistic orbit so it will go up and it will fall back no matter how fast you throw it now if you fire it like let's say 100 km per second of course it's going to leave earth but it's not going to come back so you you cannot introduce things using this 
now you might be like doesn't this gun is a danger to safety well no simply because it is going to be so big you can't aim it and once you built it everybody knows where it is everybody knows uh, like you know if you try to use this sort of gun to attack some other country everybody knows where to attack this this is a, like worst weapon but it can allow you to ve very cheaply use explosive and just uh, you know bombard the whole uh, orbit with uh, enough projectiles that uh, either the while they are going up like because it's orbit like this uh, it's going up it can knock things out or it will like while coming down it will knock things down in that scenario it can clear up a lot of area this is a gun approach this is you know old uh, western approach then we have laser brooms of course like uh, the right now this is the simplest and cheapest option but problem is uh, you are talking about lasers that are powerful enough like they can have pulse of a few megawatts per second um not second as in picoseconds so the pulse that can go through so generally they are built in uh, high altitude places as in mountain tops so they can go through atmosphere without losing lo enough of energy or you can have like hundreds of them uh, which is uh, you know giving lot less energy but they are all focusing on one point that way you can deorbit even big objects basically the moment you hit something the laser will hit something it will evaporate that area that will act as a thrust so if you have a giant rocket stage coming up you fire a rock uh, laser pulse into this and it evaporated it, it will slow it down so generally things will fall to earth no matter what you do it's like oh, the only problem is it will take 500 years so using this method you can reduce the time to like few minutes it's like okay now it's deorbiting 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 so and there is another nasa proposal this one is the kind of funny proposal i have provided the link down below is basically they're gonna have high altitude balloons nothing fancy just simple balloon with giant explosives now that explosive is not nuclear it's normal explosive they're gonna go to high altitude and they're gonna pulse blast it as in detonate it as quickly as possible so it's gonna uh, throw a column of air upwards now anything that is caught into that air you know air uh, basically shock wave it's going to lose its speed and fall to orbit so they predicted that it will allow to clear up low earth orbit in few days so we have solutions at this point flat out we have the tools hundreds of tools like this gun was decommissioned we can build it in like say two uh, one year and like big ones this already a lot of uh, what you say observatory are at this position with lasers that are powerful enough so a lot of these sort of scenario we have it like the tools are there it's just that uh, until Kessel syndrome really becomes an issue, nobody is going to take any action on it. Uh, so this is the you know stalemate that we are in right now. So it's not hopeless. Be mindful of that. It's not hopeless. We can take care of it. It's just everybody is waiting. So this was my presentation on Kessel syndrome. I hope you liked it or learned from it. In that case, please leave a like. If you didn't, don't worry about it. You can dislike it. I would urge you to leave a comment on my video and uh, please share it amongst your friends. Hashtag Rocket Monday and subscribe. Press the bell icon if you're free and as always, thanks for watching.